Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm gonna to be sketching again from inside my studio here, um, but I wanted to talk to you about a couple things first and then I'll get started with my sketch. Um, some people have asked about my studio and when I'm gonna do my final studio tour and it is coming up, but because of the coronavirus pandemic, we were getting ready to go. We have to drive about an hour to big box stores like Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's, that kind of thing. So we were getting ready to go out and purchase several things like the backsplash for my kitchen that still isn't in. We needed some more lumber, um, but I, for the studio, I need my vanity and counter and sink and faucet. It wasn't a big deal during the winter because I don't have running water here in order to keep my taxes like this is a barn. I can't have running water. I can have electricity, but I cannot have running water. So what my plan was is to have a hose run underground so that I have a faucet during the spring and summer and fall months. And then once the freeze hits, I have to turn my water off for the winter, which isn't a big deal because I bring like bottles of water out like this or um, I've got a big jug here, this two and a half gallon jug, which needs to be filled, that kind of thing, and pet fills for me and whatever. So I've been improvising and that's fine. You know, I'm a long time camper, so I don't worry about those kinds of things. And if I need to wash something that's really heavily soiled, I just take it in. It's not like I have far to walk. Uh, but I'm going to go over, it, many of you have been saying you really liked that perspective video that I put out and the sketch video. Some of you have asked that I slow down for the sketches and I would do that except for those kinds of sketches. They can get simply boring and then people fast forward through them anyway. So in order to keep the viewing, viewing where people would like it I, and keep my videos shorter, that's why I'm doing things in time lapse and they're very fast. But then I can also get in a couple tips on those videos, which brings me to the second thing. Because you guys like that, I've been getting lots of requests for, for more videos like that that explain different tips for plein air painting, sketching from life, uh, urban sketching, all of those kinds of things. So I'm gonna continue with that series for a period of time. And then I'm gonna get back to uh, doing, I wanna do more plein air painting once the weather breaks and gets nice here. I'm in Michigan, as most of you know, and it's still cold today. I think we're up to 39, woohoo, but we were in the 20s last night. So it's not warm here yet. We're supposed to be in the 50s this time of year, but we've had a cold snap. And I think most of the country has, but. Um, and I've been getting so many well wishes. I want you guys to know that I am pretty much better now and I don't know 100% if I had the coronavirus. I was presumed positive, unconfirmed. So that's, that's what they did. They said if I needed to be hospitalized, then I would be tested. And that's how it's been here. Now they're ramping up testing and they have a drive-through testing site about 25 minutes from my home, but it's too late for me at this point. I would like to get antibody testing to make sure that I had it and, and just to know, although they don't know how much the immunity will hold anyway. Which brings me to my next thing. I got a phone call this morning. I hope I don't cry. <laughs> I got a phone call this morning that my brother-in-law passed away last night and it was very sudden and it was likely the coronavirus. He had been sick for a couple of weeks had the fever like most of us had that lasted for, you know, one to two weeks. And then he started feeling better and he was doing good. And then all of a sudden he relapsed and his fever came back and the shortness of breath got worse and the cough. He wanted to go to the hospital, but apparently his doctor said, well, you can finish a sentence. You're not that bad. You don't need to go to the hospital. So he didn't. And he was going to sit up that night to sleep. And my sister-in-law said, why don't you come to bed? And uh, he decided to do that. And he took a breath and his head went back and he was gone, just like that. She's a registered nurse too. She's a registered nurse. So she was able to do CPR. And 
She didn't think she had a pulse when she called 911 and they got there a few minutes later. They said he did have a pulse. So they took him out to the EMS vehicle and were going to transport him to the hospital. They were using an Ambu bag to breathe for him. And uh, he didn't regain consciousness, but he cardiac arrested again and they couldn't get an IV in and uh, his heart stopped again. And as most of you know, if you watch the news, EMS units are not allowed to take people to the hospital if they're arresting like that. They're supposed to call it and take them to the morgue. Um, so that's what they did. But anyway, such is life, right? Uh, <laughs> it's a bad, bad virus. And I've seen so many people write so many things on the internet like it's a hoax or being pissed off because they can't go buy gardening supplies. I mean, here in Michigan, we've got some really tight rules. Uh, for a while, there was a rumor going out that around while well, it actually happened. A couple stores said that somebody couldn't buy a car seat for their child. Well, that's a necessity. So obviously they were wrong and they were corrected on that. But it's pretty bad here in Michigan. And we are the third worst in the country for the amount of uh, confirmed cases that we have. And then there's a lot of unconfirmed cases like I was and like my brother-in-law was. Um, but anyhow, they thought he had the flu and gave him Tamiflu and it didn't make him better. I've had Tamiflu for a very bad flu. And let me tell you, it makes you better fast. Um, it didn't help him. So Anyway, uh, just take it seriously. Please don't be upset that you have to spend a few weeks at home. You're alive, and being alive is a great thing, you know. It could be, it could be somebody in your family. You just don't know. And people have asked about my father. My father is doing good as far as the virus goes, but he's slowing down considerably. He's doing much worse. He has a couple hours a day where he feels okay and can talk and and everything, but um, his heart is giving out and he sleeps most of the time. He's had five heart attacks through his life. He's diabetic. Um, so anyway, he's, he's not gonna live forever either. He's 92, so... Um, but he doesn't have the virus, and we got him out of assisted living into my sister, sister's house. And he's been living with them ever since the beginning of March, I believe. So he's doing good, and they're taking good care of him. And uh, hopefully he'll be around long enough that I can visit him again. I can't visit him until this is over, so... Anyway, for those of you who don't believe this and you think it's a hoax because you live out west where there's only 20 cases in your entire state or something like that, or or you don't believe all the hype on the TV and all of that, let me tell you, it is real. It is real, and you need to take it seriously. Now I'm done, and I'm going to get happy, and I'm going to sketch because I need to get my mind off of this. So everybody stay safe out there. Okay, so this is what I'm going to sketch. You can forget this background. I'm not going to do that. But what I want to do are these three items in front of me. This jar, this jar with the water, and then my salt jar, which looks like a light bulb. And it's got lots of um, corrosion on it from the salt. And then all the brushes. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch that. And uh, I'll try to give you some more pointers as I go. This time I'm going to start with my pencil sketch so that you can see me doing that as I go along. I like to start in pencil um, when I have a little more challenging subject. Sometimes I'll start in pencil and then switch over to pen and just realize I'm just going to use pen. But here I wanted to use pencil and that's fine. And then just go over it in pen. You can leave your pencil lines down or just go over it in pencil and skip the pen completely. Whatever you prefer to do is fine. In my last video, I challenged you to sketch from life and to keep up that daily practice if you can do that. 
And now that many of you are doing that and you're tagging me on Instagram, and I think that's great. Keep doing it. Uh, this time I'm challenging you to find something that you think that you cannot draw, something that you've avoided because you think it's very difficult. Uh, somebody posted something the other day on Instagram and tagged me, and she was so proud of herself for sketching a glass jar because she thought glass was going to be too difficult for her and she did it and it looked wonderful and I challenge you to do the same thing not necessarily glass but something that's been really difficult for you to do now the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about was once you get everything down you you're feeling comfortable with catching still sketching still lives then start challenging yourself to sketch things that are in motion, your family members, your pets, your fish in your aquarium, uh, whatever the case may be, find something that's moving and start practicing those things. Now, for me, that is a challenge. And I'll show you in my video here that I did do that with my dog the other day. Um, and I was glad and proud of myself that I actually got it done. Uh, but I challenge you to do that too. Now, I also want to share a tip with you that Mark Taro Holmes wrote in his book, The Urban Sketcher, Techniques for Seeing and Drawing on Location. He has one chapter here, Sketching Repetitive Motion, um, which might be like your, your typical like orchestra, for instance. They make the same motion over and over like a violinist moving their bow back and forth across the violin. They stay in that same position quite often. They may stop, they may start, but they're going to repeat it. He has a trick to share. It's a little tip. And he says, working in pencil, scribble the first pose that grabs your attention. And as soon as that pose vanishes, just shift over on the page and start the next interesting posture. Space them out nicely over your paper. Sketch each on its own page, but wait for the cycles to repeat and follow along. Switching poses as they appear. Add information every time they repeat. So go back to that sketch and continue on it when you see it repeating. Never stop drawing. Use the downtime on one pose to advance the other. The ones that get finished will be the important ones. It means those are the poses that repeated the most often, or at least... Similar poses appeared. The ones you only scribble once probably weren't that descriptive anyway, as they didn't recur. This approach doesn't always work, but you'll quickly learn when you're in an appropriate situation to at least try it. And then for those of you who aren't ready to move on to moving subjects, I challenge you to do contour drawings. In fact, I think we should all practice contour drawings. I don't do it enough. I haven't done it in a long time. Some people like um, Tio Yaichi, who has a YouTube channel. If you watch him when he sketches, he sketches quite often in contour drawing where he doesn't lift his pen up. He just keeps working from one line to the next. And he very, very rarely lifts his pen off the paper. There's also something called blind contour drawing where you don't lift your pen, but you also do not look at your hand. You just follow your subject. That's a good practice too. It helps build your brain, your hand coordination with your brain. And they may look ugly, but that's okay. Try dedicating a drawing or sketchbook, not a watercolor journal, just to contour drawing and practice those. Okay, I'm just about finished here. Um, I'm just adding some white streaks in so you can tell that this is glass. Uh, there's a lot of glaring on this. So I want to get it on, on the glass here. Um, this is all glaring as well. There, I think that's pretty good. And then here I want to have this too. The silver on here. 
you can't really see the silver as much as I can. It sparkles on here. I'm using silver paint, but um, so that's it. It was just a real quick sketch, and I hope you enjoyed it. And um, just keep drawing from life inside your, in your home, um, wherever you're at. Just find some objects and challenge yourself. Don't go for the easy stuff that you know you can paint. Go for stuff that you might be challenged by. Like I screwed up some of these brushes because I'm a little distracted today, but I um, did it anyway, you know, and that's all you got to do is just have fun with it. Try to challenge yourself and before you know it we'll be able to get outside and do some sketching and if you're comfortable and able to go out and sketch from your car you can sketch from your car just keep your windows up and don't talk to anybody um, for those of you who will probably ask me this is the sailor feud 55 degree pen these pens now are down to about 10 11 bucks online it's a fountain pen uh, it comes with a um, screw converter so it screws up and down here the ink that I'm using right now is platinum carbon ink and uh, right now I have mixed brown I'm sorry I'm shaking my camera because it's attached to my cabinet I'm mixing my brown and my black together so my black is a little bit duller here I put mostly brown and just a little tinge of black but this is platinum carbon ink I don't recommend it for expensive pens because it has carbon in it which means it has particles in it which means that it could damage a very expensive pen for a cheap pen like this I'm not too worried I've never had a problem with it for the longest time I only used noodlers ink which is also they make regular and waterproof inks um, Lexington Gray is one of my favorites. I love this gray. And I don't, I'm going to have to see if Platinum Carbon now makes a nice gray because I prefer their ink because it dries fast. Noodlers takes longer to dry. And depending on the paper that you have in your book and the amount of sizing you have, you're going to have a difference in your dry time. This is another one of my favorite inks. And unfortunately, I forget the name of it. Shoot. I always forget the name of it. This is a green ink with gold particles in it. So I only use it with a dip pen, but it is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so those are the inks that I use. This kind of ink, uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's, you can only use with a dip pen. Uh, in fact, I might use that. You can use it with a brush too. I might use it on my gold area today. But that's what I used in my brushes. These are just synthetics that I picked up today. This is a King Art uh, number four precision. And I used a uh, golden Teclon um, Zem brush, a triple lot. And uh, Daniel Smith watercolors. And I think that's pretty much it. I love this ink. This is the best white. It is better than gouache. It's called, uh, it's Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. It's very, very thick, so when you get it, you need to stir it up. And I didn't know that initially, so I was working off the top, and it was very dry, but you can see here how thick this is. It's super, super thick. And uh, just stir it up good and then use it. I just stir it up with the back of a brush, and then I wipe my brush off. But I've had this ink for over a year maybe longer and you know I barely I'm not even I'm down to half maybe one thing I forgot to do was to add shadows and plant my table I'm gonna put it back on my table here and even though um, I have a clear tabletop I'm just gonna put some shadowing here just to um, keep these things from looking like they're floating you know what I mean if you don't plant them down on, oops, if you don't plant them down onto the tabletop, you're going to lose that grounding and they're all going to look like they are um, floating in midair. I'm just going to put this back on my tripod here and finish this up real quick. Just plant a spot behind here for the table. Um, I just got my hand all over this. I am so distracted. 
go right through your glass because you'll be able to see through it. Make sure you go behind the, what you need to go behind though. It's too stark coming through the glass. It would be distorted and probably at a lower level. It would dip down and come down here. Just like if you look at the stems of plants inside glass, it does the same thing. So I'm just going to kind of cover this and make it a little less harsh. The other thing that I want to do when you're putting a shadow down with glass Usually there's a reflection that comes through as well. So I'm just gonna take my small brush here, grab a little of this white ink, and I'm just gonna make some streaky marks here, like the light is shining through the glass in certain areas. Not on this, because that's salt, so it's solid, but down here, just to give that, uh, give your eye that, <laughs> can't even talk, just to give your brain that um, signal that, oh wait, that's a reflection, it's not, that's glass, you know, and I think I'm about done here, I don't like how dark this came out, so I'm just going to put some white over that too, there. Okay, it's just a sketch, Sharon. Chill out. Well, that was just what I needed. So, <laughs> I know it was just kind of a sloppy sketch, but that's what you get. It's a sketchbook, and that's another thing. You guys, don't worry about your sketchbook not being perfect if you screw something up. Your sketchbook is just that. And you know what else? If you have an iPad, you can also do quick sketches on your iPad and uh, I'll show you something that I did on Procreate in like two minutes. Last night, I was just, the dog was sitting in front of me. And so I just quickly threw that together. Doesn't really look like him, but I was just trying to get the nose and the face down and that kind of a thing. Use your iPad and do that as well. Uh, finally got my my new eye pencil so that was good but uh don't worry about your sketchbooks getting dirty and the way some people like to start theirs in the middle because they have trouble getting that first page done but i like all of mine chronological got ink all over my hands um so i always put a quote and some supplies in the front of my book which is what i did here and it's funny because this quote says every artist was once an amateur by ralph waldo emerson and i spelled amateur wrong <laughs> So it worked perfectly. I just crossed it out and wrote amateur incorrectly. But uh, I'm an amateur speller too, I guess. I don't know where my brain went. I know how to spell amateur. But anyway, um, my sketches aren't perfect. They're not perfect. So don't worry about it. In fact, on this one, there was more than one person that thought this plant had holes in it because it matched the background. What I should have done was painted the background in. In fact, I think I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to put some gray down and that way this will look like it's supposed to look. Thanks for putting up with my little story and I hope the tips helped and it wasn't much because it's a short video, but remember, be courageous. Paint with wild abandon, but most of all, be kind to each other and be kind to yourself too. You're allowed to make mistakes. So take care everyone. See you soon.